The stock market is now down 21 percent. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. When the market crashes, people began to fear that the money they had in the bank would be lost whereas seasoned investors eagerly wait for market crash and there are many investors who made big money during a stock market crash. We'll study all the old market crashes and the strategies that were used by these seasoned investors to make millions of dollars as this will help us understand what stocks to buy during next market crash. We need to first understand two terms, long position and short position. We all know about long position, buying stocks on a long position is the action of purchasing shares of stock anticipating the stock's value will rise over time. Buy low, sell high. Meaning if you bought a share for $100 and tomorrow the price of this share has increased to $110, then your profit would be $10. Second is the short position. It is a technique used when an investor anticipates that the value of a stock will decrease in the short term, sell high, buy low. The intent is to borrow the stock for sale at a high price, then buy them back later at a lower price. We'll start with Bill Ackman, founder and CEO of Pershing Square Capital Management, a hedge fund management company. The billionaire investor's hedge fund raked in $2.6 billion in the spring of 2020 by wagering pandemic fears with royal financial markets. Ackman was born on May 11, 1966 in New York. His father was the chairman of Ackman Brothers and Singer, a commercial real estate mortgage brokerage. He graduated from Harvard University in 1988 with a bachelor's degree in history, he also earned his MBA from Harvard. He began his career in the real estate sector, working for his father at Ackman Brothers and Singer. Later, he founded the investment firm Gotham Partners, which was a firm that made small investments in public companies. Following the downfall of Gotham, he forayed into the hedge fund sector once again and founded Pershing Square Capital Management in 2004. His most successful investments have always been controversial. He used to short overvalued companies and would profit from them. He revealed that he was buying shares, sparking accusations that he was trying to scare investors into selling so he could buy at a discount or profit from short bets. Market commentators also accused him of fear-mongering. However, this strategy failed when Ackman made a short bet against Herbalife, a developer and marketer of weight loss and vitamin supplements. Betting a whopping $1 billion against Herbalife on the grounds that it was an illegal pyramid scheme that preyed on low-income people and minority groups that he thought would eventually go to zero. However, Ackman lost $1 billion shorting the shares of Herbalife. During the coronavirus pandemic, when the world saw its first coronavirus lockdown come into force in Wuhan, Ackman advised President to shut down the U.S. for one month in an effort to contain the novel coronavirus and said financial markets would rally in response to such decisive action. Ackman made almost 100 times his money on a $27 million coronavirus hedge and made $2.6 billion. He then spent about $1.5 billion rebuilding a position in Starbucks and adding to companies like Berkshire Hathaway, Hilton, and many more. He later added on Twitter that he saw bargains of a lifetime. Next case study is of Jim Simons and what he did. He was a popular math professor at Harvard. However, after a couple of years, Simons was tired of teaching. In 1964, he was hired by a national intelligence group called Institute for Defense Analyses, helping to fight the Cold War. While trying to crack codes at IDA, Simons used his spare time to research and ponder the world of global finance. Eager to earn more money, he began thinking about ways to use his talent for numbers to crack the stock market. Rather than the tried and tested investment methods that took into account earnings and corporate news, Simons began to approach the market from a whole new perspective. He looked at the stock market the same way that he looked at math, as an abstract intellectual system. He thinks that if human emotions can actually be predicted with the help of charts while trading, then computers can predict these patterns in a much better way. In 1982, Jim Simons founded Renaissance Technologies, the ultra-secretive quantitative hedge fund. Renaissance Technologies offers three products. The Medallion Fund, the Institutional Equities Fund, and Institutional Diversified Alpha. However, the Medallion Fund gets the most attention because it generates tremendous returns. They have employees with a math or physics background and PhD, their team consists of scientists, not Wall Street folks. With zero finance background, they treat financial data like the scientific or text data they use to experiment on. They apply machine learning to model financial markets and predict market crashes. Medallion Fund clocked annualized returns of 66% since 1988. 
After fees, those annualized returns were still remarkable, at 39%. Third one is the big shot. Michael Burry was born and grew up in California. At the age of two, he lost his left eye to retinoblastoma and has had a prosthetic eye ever since. He studied economics and pre-med at the University of California, earned an MD degree from the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. At Stanford University Medical Center, he started but did not finish his residency in pathology. While off-duty at night, he worked on his hobby that was financial investing. In 2000, he left medicine for good and made the leap from being an amateur investor to creating his own investment fund, Sign Capital. Burry's good eye was reflected almost immediately. In 2001, while the Standard & Poor's 500 was falling 11.8%, Sign Capital was returning returns to its investors of 55%. He was early on the call that the internet had way overvalued companies with little to no revenue or profitability. He began shorting those stocks immediately and his hedge fund went up like a rocket ship. The market continued to fall dramatically the next two years yet Burry's fund returned 16% and 50%, making him one of the most successful investors in the industry. However, Burry was soon onto a new idea as he began to analyze the subprime financing market and bank balance sheets. He noticed great irregularities and unsustainability in this market. He saw the riskiness of the subprime market as millions of borrowers with low income and few assets bought homes and cars with tremendous leverage. Some borrowers made very low or in many cases no down payments for mortgages that they couldn't possibly pay back if interest rates rose. However, the banking system was valued as if these mortgages would all be paid. Burry realized that this could not possibly continue over the long term. This conclusion led him to short the market by persuading Goldman Sachs and other investment firms to sell him credit default swaps against subprime deals he saw as vulnerable. Eventually, Burry's analysis proved correct. The stock market crashed in 2008, economic recession that was precipitated in the United States by the financial crisis quickly spread to other countries. The whole world suffered from the Great Recession that followed the stock market crash of 2008. Millions of people had lost their jobs and there was a significant increase in suicides, but Burry made a personal profit of $100 million and a profit for his remaining investors of more than $700 million. Now, the important question is, when stock market crashes what stocks should we buy? What we understood from the case study of Bill Ackman and Michael Burry that they tried to time the market, meaning they tried to predict when the market would fall. If we talk about Michael Burry, he predicted that the market would fall in 2007. However, Burry suffered an investor revolt, where some investors in his fund worried his predictions were inaccurate and demanded to withdraw their capital. Eventually, the stock market crashed in 2008, and his investors have also made big money. If we talk about Bill Ackman, Ackman made a short bet against Herbalife and criticized the business practices of Herbalife. However, despite all efforts the prices of Herbalife stocks didn't fall and Ackman lost about $760 million on the short position. However, he attempted again during coronavirus and he succeeded. We should never try to predict the market. However, if the stock market crashes due to any reason then we would do two things. If we have already done analysis of any company that the company is stable but its price has dropped because of a market crash, then we will buy a lot of shares. If we have not done analysis, then we would invest in Standard & Poor's 500 and the best way to invest in the Standard & Poor's 500 is to buy exchange-traded funds or index funds that track the index. Standard & Poor's 500 companies don't guarantee results. All investments carry risk and are subject to challenging conditions, nor should investors focus solely on this. Stocks of smaller, promising companies and international equities can offer important potential growth opportunities for investors while bonds and other assets are essential for diversification.